Okay, <laughs> let's see if I can get this thumbnail. Thumbnail, I don't have this. Hey guys, I, can't, I gotta put this down. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Warren, and today I'm here with a massive spring book haul that I wanna share with you guys and haul these books. I have over 18 books to share with you guys today. It's so many. I've collected these books over the past like two or three months, and now I'm finally going to haul them because it is May. It is pretty much the end of spring, so I might as well wrap up this season and come back to my booktube channel strong with a book haul. So we have so many books to cover, so let me get into it, and if you're interested to hear my thoughts on any of these books, or if you want to share with me your opinion on each of these books, then leave a comment down below. And also, before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Oh my gosh, where do we start? <laughs> There's so many, I don't even know where to start with these books. So the first book that I got is A Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. And I honestly picked this up because it was kind of a cover buy. I really like this cover design. I think it looks really awesome. And this is a fantasy book about phoenixes. And that's really cool because that's something I haven't really read a lot of lately are books with phoenixes in them. So I am super excited excited to read this and I hope it is interesting. This book is about a girl who lives in this queendom and I don't know if she is supposed to be the heir to the throne or if she's related to the, like the royal family in this world, but she lives in a queendom and she is betrayed by her sister and sets out to go and find the legendary phoenix riders of old and try and learn to become a phoenix flyer or phoenix rider. It sounds like it's an interesting premise. I haven't seen too many people talking about this on booktube lately, so I hope it's really good. I really like the cover. And then on the back of it, it says, I am a daughter of death. From the ashes I rose, like a phoenix from the pyre. <laughs> Why is it that all of these YA heroine characters talk like Smog the Dragon from The Hobbit? Every single fantasy book that I've looked at like the past few months, every little like protagonist is just like, I am fire. I am death. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm like, okay, we get it. You're psychotic. You're mad that you were betrayed. So I don't know. It I, That was the impression I got from this, but I thought the cover was cool enough and the plot sounded interesting, so I thought it'd be cool to pick it up and read it. The next book that I picked up was also one that I've heard really good things about, and I actually decided to pick it up. I recognized it from Brittany's channel, from Brittany the Bibliophile, so I decided to pick this up because I heard really good things about it from her, and I was curious if it would be any good, and that is The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima, and this series just seems so interesting and unique. When I was reading the premises of it, it didn't feel like it was that much of like a YA kind of fantasy, but it felt like it had a lot more of a darker, grittier feel to it. And that was really exciting because I've been needing a new fantasy series to latch onto since like Throne of Glass and everything has ended. So I'm really excited to read this and see if this is going to be something that I'm going to really like. Um, so this is the first book in the Seven Realms series, and this is about a thief named Han, like Han Solo, and he takes this magical amulet that belongs to the Demon King. So he he has like this magic wizard family that's coming after him that wants it back. Then you have a princess named Reza or Reza, Reza, and she doesn't really like the formality and kind of the elite, the royal life and and the princessy thing. So she wants kind of a life of freedom, a life that's away from sort of the stuffy formality. So she and Han obviously will cross paths and we have an adventure story. So I am really looking forward to this. I've heard that this is such a good series. I don't know, something about it just sort of like stood out to me and I thought, you know, I really want to read this because it seems like it will be a really good series. And I've never read anything by Cinda Williams Chima, so she's kind of a new to me author and I'm really excited to read this book and see if I like it. It'd be really cool if she became one of my new favorite authors. But my first impression of it seems to be pretty cool, so I am really looking forward to reading this. I feel like I'm not doing a good job explaining the books that I'm talking to. Sometimes it's really hard when I have like no idea what they're about. I'm like, yes! It's a book! <laughs> Since I was interested in The Demon King, I picked up another book by Cinda Williams Chima, and that is Flamecaster by Cinda Williams Chima, and this is the first book in the Shattered Realms novel, and I didn't realize at the time that this book was like the sequel series to The Demon King, so... I can't really read this now until I read the other series. I had no idea at the time. It looks like they were just two separate series, and I thought that was really cool that, that this author had more than one series out. And this picture high key reminds me of Aelin Galathinius from Throne of Glass. I mean, come on. So <laughs> I was like, yes, I need this. So I picked this up, and I had no idea that this was actually like a sequel that's set like 10 or 15 years after the events of the Seven Realms series. So I don't really think I can read it till I read the main series. If any of you have read this series, let me 
know in the comments. You don't have to read them chronologically or if you do have to read them kind of in order. I don't really know, but all I know now is that this is part of the same universe, so oopsie. So I'm just going to have to wait to read this book until I finish the other series and then I will get to this. But this book also sounds really, really awesome and I love the cover because it reminds me of Aelin and it just looks cool, so. Next, I got two books from the used bookstore because I have a half price book that's nearby, so I love going in there to shop. And I got a series that I have wanted forever and just never picked up. I could never find it in any bookstores. So when I finally saw it in Half Price Books, I just really wanted to get it. And I see it in almost every booktuber's bookshelf, so I know that it's popular. That is the Lux series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is Lux Beginnings, which is the bind up of the first two books, Obsidian and Onyx. And then I got the second one, which is Lux Consequences, and this is the bind up of Opal and Origin. And basically from what I know about this story, this is pretty much Twilight but sci-fi aliens. Sounds kind of interesting, does kind of sound a little trashy, it's not usually my taste, but it has to do with aliens and sci-fi, so I thought I would definitely give it a read because I really like sci-fi and these books are just so aesthetic. I love like the spines and how they look, and I've seen so many booktubers talk about this series and I've really been interested in it, wanted to join the conversation, so I picked up these for a pretty cheap price. They were a good find, so I'm looking forward to reading them and I hope that they are good. So this series follows a girl named Katie and her next door neighbor Damon, who's this really attractive, very hot alien boy, pretty much has a crush on him and he's arrogant and annoying, but she can't help but have feelings for him. And there's some sci-fi conflict, there's some other alien factions and like some galactic drama going on that she now finds herself in the middle of with these feuds because she's associated with the aliens now. So it sounds really interesting, even if they do seem kind of trashy. I hope they're good. The next book that I picked up is one that's actually more of a history book, it's non-fiction, and that is Germania by Tacitus, and Tacitus was a Roman historian. So this is a historical account of the Germanic tribes that lived up in Germany um, during the Roman Empire. Tacitus studied them and he made this entire account of just their way of life, and I think that's something that's very interesting to me as someone who has Germanic heritage. I thought it was a cool way to learn a little bit more about that part of the world and where I come from from and reading some of this. So I picked this one up. This translation is by J.G. C. Anderson and this is kind of like a commentary with the original text and just some notes on it. So it seems pretty cool. I'm very much into history as you guys know. I, I've brought that up a lot on my channel. I love history and I love mythology and folklore. So reading is great for enjoyment, but I think it's also great for educating and learning and developing yourself. And so I think it's great to read nonfiction from time to time. Another historical book that I picked up along with Tacitus is a book that actually doesn't have a name at all. It's actually the book is actually just called AM434A, which is kind of weird, but they've given it kind of like an honorary title, and that is called Norse Magical and Herbal Healing, a medieval book from medieval Iceland, and it's translated by Ben Wag Wagoner. And basically this is just a simple kind of like a little booklet that just contains different medicinal uses and magical spells that involve plants and herbs that were used in ancient Iceland, and it's one of the only surviving words that exists about the Norse kind of shamanic and, and magical animistic worldview and, and how they used different plants and berries and herbs for alchemy, for potion making, for healing, and, and just for food and different things like that. And it's one of the only surviving works because most everything was lost during the witch trials. I cannot wait to go through this and learn a little bit of lost history. And next up, I got something really, really special and I'm actually really excited about this. And it is a box from Barnes and Noble, and I have not opened it yet. I've been waiting to open this so I could do it on camera and show you guys so you can get a little book unboxing because I actually haven't done a lot of book unboxings. I know that I haul a lot of books, but I don't think I've actually done a video where I just open packages and do like unboxing and stuff. So today we're going to be doing a book unboxing and I'm really, really excited because this is something that I wanted because it is one of my favorite series of all time. It gives me so much nostalgia and it brings me back to my middle school and high school years. And it was also adapted into one of my favorite cinematic films. So I will show you what this book series is in a second, but we're going to unbox it on camera. So let's see, I need my knife. I'm gonna use my Scottish knife here, my little dagger. I'm totally cutting towards myself right now, which is a big no-no. Got it, okay, don't need the box now. And so this super exciting book series is The Hunger Games. This is the 10th 
anniversary special collector's edition and I am so excited to have this. I love this series so much and the first film, The Hunger Games, is one of my favorite films ever. It is such a great film from a cinematic point of view when you're looking at it in terms of, of art. The cinematography, music, lighting, acting, it's all stellar, it's all really good. But the book series is amazing. Nothing has ever been able to top it. This has just been the superior series compared to like Divergent and Legend and all of that. It's just, this is the better series. It was a really big part of that year for me, the year 2012, like watching The Hunger Games film, listening to the soundtrack, it was just a highlight of that year for me. And so after I watched the film, I really wanted to read the series because I was interested in it, and I just fell in love with it ever since then. So let me show you the books. So the first book is The Hunger Games, of course, and I love this new cover. It's so sleek and clean and simplistic. I love the, just the white background and kind of the shimmering, like it's like has, it's like a shimmery, glowy kind of cover. I really love this. And so it just makes it feel very, very dystopian, but also has kind of a sense of that like capital gladiator type of feel to it, I guess. I don't know, it just captures like the essence of the story, I think, really well. And the back of this book has over 50 pages of exclusive material about the creation of The Hunger Games with Suzanne Collins and just sort of how the books were written and just the world building that she did for it. So I'm really, really excited to read that. And then we have Catching Fire, which is the second book. This one is my personal favorite as far as the books go. My favorite of the films is The Hunger Games, but my favorite of the books is Catching Fire because in this book, the stakes are just raised so much more. You see more of the world and more of the districts and you also get to experience a new type of Hunger Games. So it just builds off of the last book really, really well and the stakes are raised and everything just feels so much more ur urgent. This one is definitely my favorite of the series because I feel like it just peaked at this moment because everything had been building up to a head and this book just really just raises everything and makes it so much more intense and so much more dramatic. And then we have Mockingjay, which is the last book. It is probably my least favorite, but I still think this book is much better than the two movies, even though the movies aren't terrible. This book is much better than the two movies and I think that they really didn't need to split them up into part one and part two. I mean, this book is not that big. I mean, they really could have just made this one book, but it's still pretty good and it completes the trilogy. It makes the series whole and it also has a really cool design. I love the white and blue with the kind of the shimmering effect. Really, really awesome. So all three of these books together are just a phenomenal series. So I really like having this collector's edition of the series. I only like getting collector's editions to series that I've really stuck with for a long time. Things that I have enjoyed or I've continued to come back to or read or watch on the big screen. Those are series that I really like having collector's editions to. If they're just a book that I've never read or that I've only read it once and just never really got back into it, I don't really like getting the collector's edition just because it looks cool. I only like getting them if they mean something to me. So this series definitely does and I think these will just look great on my shelf. The next book that I got is one that I have wanted for a really long time and just never picked it up and never decided to read it even though it's been on my list and that is A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray and I really, really like this cover. I think it is so cool with all the colors on it and this is a young adult sci-fi story about a girl named Marguerite and her parents are both really great physicists and they're very like well-renowned scientists and one day her father is murdered and the primary suspect of the murder slips away to another dimension and so Marguerite now has to track him down and go through all of these just different alternate universes and alternate dimensions of her reality trying to find this guy and each reality has like a different version of him and she has to figure out which one is the real one and which one is not. It sounds like such a cool idea for a story so I'm really looking forward to reading this. I hope that it's good. It sounds Sounds like it's going to be really awesome and I just think that the color is really nice and I know that they turned this into a series so it is more than one book. It looked really cool and I really like the plot idea behind it. The next book is another sci-fi book and that is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nuevo and this is an adult sci-fi book and I've heard that it is very similar to Illuminae because it's in kind of an interview mixed media format similar to those books. This is about a girl named Rose who is riding her bike one day and then she falls into this like giant hole in the ground and discovers that that hole is actually part of some gigantic alien machinery, like this giant alien technology. And so she is then interviewed by the authorities about the 
technology and they are trying to investigate what it is and trying to figure out what it is and it leads to like a mystery. I've heard really good things about it and I know several people on YouTube who have said really great things about it and this is one of their favorite series. I'm going to pick it up and read it and I hope that I will enjoy it too. I know that this is also a trilogy so I think that if I like the first book I will continue with it and read the next one. But then the next book that I got is one that I'm really really excited for. It is right up my alley and it's historical fiction so it goes well with all of the other history books that I like to read and that is The Last Kingdom by Bernard Cornwell. This book is a historical fiction about the Viking invasion of Anglo-Saxon England. I don't really know much about it other than it is a book that is historical fiction and drama and it's basically about the Anglo-Saxons having to deal with the Vikings that are invading their land and one man who is trying to save England. It sounds like it's going to be really really awesome and I know that they have made a TV show about it so it's kind of similar to Vikings and Game of Thrones so I definitely going to read this because I'm also very into all of that historically and culturally wise so I can't wait to read this. This is a very very long series. I know that there's like six or seven books in the series, maybe even more, but this is the first one and this is what they based the show off of. So I'm looking forward to reading this and I hope that I enjoy it because it sounds pretty badass. I mean, you've got Danish Vikings versus the Anglo-Saxons, two really great kingdoms of military strategy fighting each other. It's kind of cool. So I'm looking forward to reading this and I hope that it's good. And then the next two books that I have are graphic novels and comic books because I do read a little bit of comics. I'm not a huge comic book reader, it's not my go-to thing, but I do enjoy some comics from time to time, especially Batman. So I do have a collection of graphic novels here for the last part of this haul, and actually today, May 4th, 2019, is free comic book day. So I got some comics today too because they were having a deal. The first like comic graphic novel I picked up is actually one from an old movie that I'm nostalgic about, and that is... Back to the Future, The Untold Tales in Alternate Timelines. And this, I saw this in the comic book store today, and I just was like, I have to get this, because Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies of all time. I love this movie so, so much, and the DeLorean time machine has been my dream car since I was like 10 years old. I want this car. <laughs> I have always wanted this car. I've always wanted like the time machine and everything. So this is actually a comic written by Bob Gale, the writer of the Back to the Future movie. And it's basically just the sort of untold backstories and, and things that fill in the gaps between the movies. So in this comic, we learn how Marty and Doc met each other for the first time. We learn sort of the behind the scenes of how Doc invented his his new time machine in Back to the Future 3, and we follow them on some adventures through alternate timelines and alternate time travel dimensions. It's one of my favorite film series of all time. I love the movies so much. They're so iconic, and I'm so glad that my parents showed them to me when I was little, and I just fell in love with them, and I've loved it ever since. I've loved Marty McFly and Doc. They've been like my favorite duo, and I've just always wanted this car so, so bad. Artwork looks really, really good, and the stories look great because I've always wondered just what happened off screen in between the movies that we didn't get to see. I always think that would be so cool to finally get a story about it, and now we do. Definitely looking forward to this. There's two volumes of this. There's this one, and there's a second volume, which I didn't get because it just didn't seem as interesting. It sounded more like a spin-off thing, where this one actually feels more supplemental to the movies. So I liked the idea of this one a lot more. And then the rest of the comics I got are all Batman comics. <laughs> First Batman comic is Batman Year One by Frank Miller. This is the origin story of Batman. And this is also what Christopher Nolan based his movie Batman Begins off of, is Batman Year One, and it is his his origin story of how Batman comes on the scene and it is in a very more realistic way than the other portrayals that we've seen of Batman in different movies and comics. I am really really excited to read this. This is a legendary iconic Batman story and I cannot wait to read it. It's it's awesome. The artwork looks amazing. The cover art looks awesome and I just really can't wait to pick this up. I also picked up The Long Halloween by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale and The Long Halloween is what inspired The Dark Knight, the best superhero film ever. And basically, so this is about Batman having to pretty much fight all of his villains and his enemies at once, or just all kind of striking at the same time, and he has to figure out how to stop them. And this is where a lot of the movie got inspiration for more of its like law and order CSI kind of feel to it, where it was super realistic and it focused a lot on the justice system and the police department, and not so much on the more like fantastical gothic style Gotham City. This is more realistic 
music and this focuses on like vigilanteism and the villains. So for the movie that was all inspired by The Long Halloween which is also another classic Batman story that is very very popular. And the next one that I got from the comic book store today at Free Comic Book Day was Batman The Golden Age. This is a bind up of all of Batman's classic comic book runs from the 40s and 50s when he first debuted as a hero. This includes Detective Comics issues 27 through 45 and Batman 1 through 3 and New York World's Fair Comics number 2. So those are all of the comics that are bound up together in this book and they are literally from like 1939, 1940. So these are like the first ever published Batman comics. And I think that's just something that's really special because he's been a character that's been around for so long, longer than most superheroes have been around. And I am just really excited to have this and to celebrate this character and the legacy that this character has written. They have like that old comic-y look to them. So it just seems like a special way to celebrate the literal golden age of Batman and I'm just here for it. So really glad to have this. And then the last one that I picked up was just a small little issue and this is called Year of the Villains and this is a big summer crossover event they're having this summer for DC Comics where all of the DC villains are rising up and challenging the heroes. I don't keep up with comics enough to really follow them that much to know what's going on, but they were giving these out literally for free, so it's like, sure, I'll, why not? I'll get one. So those are all of the books and graphic novels that I have to haul for you guys. It's been an epic book haul. I've collected these over the past couple months. I'll be very, very busy this summer with all of these books. I hope you enjoyed this haul. As always, social media links are in the description below. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys real soon with another new video. Bye!